All right, what's up, what's up? Uh, this is the third installment uh, to our Wise Guys uh, Modern Flow Trading Series. Uh, the first one we talked a little bit about, uh, what did we talk about on the first one actually? What did we talk about? Oh yeah, the value of the actual options order flow. So the value uh, of actually looking at um, you know, order flow in the markets, looking at options flow, uh, trying to decipher, you know, sentiment in the market just by looking at some of the, uh, some of the options tape. Uh, and you can see here, uh, that, you know, this is an example here from the steam room, uh, on any given day through the private Twitter feed or, uh, you know, with access into the chat room, you know, you will see a lot of options bets that are being thrown out there. And what we discussed on the first webinar was the value of these bets, why some of these bets are so interesting, how some of these bets are being made, um, and why we use that as far as finding our edge, uh, as far as what to trade uh, in the markets. The second one, we talked a little bit about swing trading. Uh, Jesus went ahead and uh, compiled a sort of Ten Commandments of swing trading and intraday trading. And today, uh, we are going to drive home uh, one of the commandments for intraday trading. And uh, we're also going to go through several examples for you. Several examples of where uh, you know our traders saw some uh, interesting option, options activity and went ahead and uh, and made some trades. Some that worked, some that didn't work. Um, and Jesus will go ahead and set up uh, uh, several there for you. So, first commandment here that we're going to go ahead and give you uh, for intraday trading, and you'll get a list of ten of these if. Uh, uh, you know, if you guys go ahead and buy the course, uh, always stick with initial alerts uh, in a particular name. So this means that you know, once that once that initial bet comes into a name, uh, and I think recently one of the bigger ones, and uh, uh, Jesus will go through this in detail. Uh, one of the initial ones that we've gotten recently is uh, is the MGM. We started seeing buying on MGM coming in around. I don't know. I, I want to say like. 22 and a half. I started messing with this on a breakout of 23 just because of all the flow that I saw. Uh, and then now what you're seeing is tons of, uh, of buying after the fact. You know, you're seeing 24 calls get bought, 24 and a half calls get bought. After the initial bet though, it gets a little bit tougher to trade. It gets a little bit tougher to find an entry for continuation. Plus, you're always at risk for stuff like this, you know, reversals here. Just because the stock is up so much, you're going to get profit taking at some point. You don't want to get caught at the top of these moves. So the best thing to do with intraday trading, if you're trading just intraday activity, uh, is to stick with those initial alerts in those names. So, geez, man, take it away. Give us, a, you know, a little spiel on the commandment, and then we'll go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about some examples. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Lutz. Thanks for everybody coming out today. Uh, and it, it's critical because it's like a, you're going to get ten commandments there. Okay, and that's going to be able uh, for anybody who subscribes to the uh, uh, to that package to basically narrow down the high probability trades. Okay, so you get a, a list of ten criteria, and if you could stick within. Um, even half of those 10, obviously the probability of you seeing success is going to be greater. Okay, and this one in my, uh, and this is why I wanted to use this one in particular today, because uh, in my opinion, it's one of the most important. And like Luci mentioned, it's not only about um, the initial action over the course of days or weeks, which is very important, um, but the initial action in a day, in, in that particular day. Okay, and just an example of that, for example, I'll use the potash, okay? Um, you could see a buyer come in at the open, and a lot of times you'll see even probably bigger in size, but you'll see more call buying come in later in the day at higher levels, okay? And this commandment is trying to get you to stick to that initial action, that first aggressive order alert in that name, okay? Because that's the early indication of momentum coming in. You don't want to chase these things out, you know, at higher levels, especially when you're trading uh, on the option side. Uh, you want to get there as early as possible before the momentum comes in. Okay, and I'm going to rattle off. I mean, this is my bread and butter, guys. This is what I do every day, nonstop. I'm almost like a Jesus algo at this point. There's, there's, there's no other focus anywhere else. Okay, I concentrate on this type of day trading, uh, and to be honest, you know, at first, this is not, this wasn't my style. I was a swing trader, but because 
of the discipline that this brings to my game and which tra has translated into success ultimately, uh, there's no reason for me to focus on anything else. Okay, and I'll show you a bunch of, the, uh, of examples yesterday and today. Uh, the flow's been brilliant, so I can show you some winners, easy winners, some that you had to grind out, and some that maybe didn't work out as expected. All right, and you can see how I would have approached and did approach all of them. Uh, let's start off with these um, these ads, okay? Because uh, they right at the open yesterday, right at the open, uh, these things got hot, okay? And um, I'll pull up the action for you. You can see. Let me blow this up because I want you to guys to get a look as close as possible here. All right, so here you have that gap up, all right? And I'm going to pull up the action. I'll pull it off right off the private Twitter here so I don't get too. Uh, confused here. And here's the first order that came in on Potash. So this would be that initial alert, okay? The first aggressive sweeper to come into Potash. And he comes in, he sweeps up seven, eight, seventeen and a half calls over a $200,000 bet, which is a decent sized bet. Sweeps multiple exchanges, so that's as aggressive as you're going to see it, in my opinion. Uh, right around $17.37 is where the stock was trading at 9.38 in the morning. So like I said, right at the open. Okay, so you can see here, we open up higher, boom, here's where the sweep comes in. And now there's several ways to play it. And this is where you guys have to incorporate this information into your own style. If you're looking for a bigger move, obviously you're going to have to incur some volatility. If you're looking just for a scalp, Guys, any time off initial sweeper, sweepers, you'll see this initial reaction right off the bat. But you can see this thing floated higher, consolidated, okay? And that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote after that. This potash got hot, and I'll show you in two minutes um, one of the reasons why that happened. Because uh, right after that potash sweeper, sweeper, excuse me, there was another sweeper, okay? Uh, here you can see 3,078, 17 and a half calls. They kept hitting it up. Mosaic ended up catching action as well at the same time. So right there, that's a strong indication that some syndicate out there, some hedge fund, somebody out there is coming in and aggressively buying upside calls in these ads. All right. And here was the mosaic, same spot, uh, and just took off from there. Again, if you wanted to milk this trade for a bigger move, you're going to have to absorb these little pullbacks here, which is fine. But the way to play that and the beauty of day trading off this intel, you put your stop loss and that's it. There's no thinking in all this. Me personally, I like taking my quick profits. Okay, they're there. It's hard for me to just leave them there and sit there through the volatility. I'll take these quick profits all day long. But if you're trading, let's say, um, the option end, okay, and you're looking... Uh, to buy a, a handful of calls here, and you need that bigger move. At the same time, you know, you're going to deal with some volatility, but you've got to give a longer leash there, okay? So you keep your stop loss again, and you let this thing ride. And um, these agricultural names were a special situation, because like I said, I refer to it as steam. They came in multiple times throughout the day, hitting multiple names, Mosaic, Potash, CF got hit up as well, and these things end up going parabolic the rest of the day. So ended up, uh, you know, a huge winner. Uh, okay, so that's that's one way to play it. That's that's the 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 day before in the agricultural group. Let's fast forward it to t today now. Okay, again, like Lucci mentioned, a lot of the juice has been in the first hour. Okay, and that makes sense, right? We're heading into the summer months. Uh, that's that's an, uh, usually, the, usually the case. The first hour has uh, the, the hottest amount of action, the more steam, as you can say. Here this morning, COP at 9.32, there was an August sweeper for $243,000, sweat multiple exchanges. Stock was at $45.99 at the time. And let's go again, right at the open. All right, and I'm using the example here because I trade stock, guys. If you trade options, you're going to need a bigger move, obviously. Uh, but when you trade stock, and this is the reason I stick with the equity, it's it's simple for me. Okay, there's there's not much thought behind anything I do here. 
top, here's that August action, comes in right at the open here, a little consolidation, all right, so you put your stop loss wherever you feel comfortable. I mean, I wouldn't use a 10 cent stop loss, I would give a little more room for some volatility, obviously. So you put your stop loss, you want to put it at the gap there, and you let it go. Okay, me personally, I'm taking this rip. Like I said, depending on your risk, whether you're trading equity, whether you're trading calls, depending on the size of your bet and the size of your account, you know, that's, that's for you to determine. Uh, but you can see, when you see these type of sweepers come in, you see this reaction more than not. Not, not all the time, okay? But more than not, if the market participates and not heads in the, in the wrong direction, you're going to see some sort of reaction that resembles this. Okay, so I got in the cop, I sold the rip, a lot of traders in the steam room held the cop. Uh, I wish I did, I did not. The stock ended up closing at the highs, even with the market selling off today. Uh, and again, the, the flow around cop helped the situation, okay? And the list of 10 commandments gets into more detail uh, of how to evaluate staying in a day trade longer, a couple techniques and tricks you could use to ride out a trade longer. But in simple English here today, without giving away too much, the flow around it uh, legitimized this cop action. Okay, there was aggressive action, a lot of these energy names. Uh, another one I touched today, you can see an E came in. Uh, I didn't play that. That had action, had a nice pop in it. Uh, let's go to the other oil while I'm on it here. MPC. Okay, I think that's Marathon. Lucha, you may know this name. Remember, it got some big bets. Uh, when was that? I think a month ago or so. This was like a month ago. Yeah, it was about a month ago on MPC. There was another one, that MRO. Like, yeah, there was a, there's a bunch of these oil names. Finally got uh, some serious rotation. But, yeah, that MPC, that's a, that's, a heavy, that's a heavy bet right there. Yeah, so, I mean, again, you don't need to be Einstein to determine, right? You don't need to be some tape reader to determine this was a, a sharp bet. Right? A guy comes in. Uh, one point one million dollar bet, uh, July thirty five. So, so again, right around the corner, thirty five dollars and ninety seven cents at eleven o'clock. Again, a lot of traders in the steam room had this play, and here's what I loved about this. Here was that rip, okay, off the cop and the other oil action, and you could see we didn't catch any action in that MPC. So rather than coming in up here and seeing that million dollar bet, they hit the first fade. And I know, Lucha, you're a big fan of that. They come in in the first fade of the day and nail the low. Yep. Okay? So we hop in there. We put our stop, again, wherever we felt comfortable. And, I mean, this rip is more than enough for me. I don't know about you guys, but this rip here is more than enough. Uh, I'm sure you could have milked it out for the rest of the day and try to get what you want. But, you know, I mean, you see a rip like this and you're a day trader, there, what else are you looking for? You're not looking for much more than that. Yeah, remember right, so also too. Remember also too. Like we were talking about intraday stuff here. So you want to find uh, you know sweeps and actionable activity, uh, options activity that uh, you know you, you you can make a nice intraday trade on. So these are some of the things that you want to follow. And remember, we got a whole list of ten commandments here. Uh, you know that'll help you iron down exactly what it is you're looking for for a scalp trade intraday trade. Because in reality, this MPC, this guy put uh, 1.3 mil out for July. You know what I mean? I mean, he put it out for July. So a swing trader can look at that same uh, activity and be like, okay, interesting. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. let's, see what let's see what strike there is. Let me see what other activity is going on in oil. Let me see where oil is in general. Do I still think, you know, oil is, is bullish? Where is the market at? Is the market still bullish? And again, we're going through, a, you know, a swing trading checklist now. And this is something that is also uh, included in the course as well. Uh, you're going to get a, a, a checklist for swing trading too. You know, this is where you want to line up, you know, what particular strategy and what type of flow fits that strategy. So, you know, this, this happened to me, you know, a great mover intraday, but this can also be a pretty dope swing uh, if money continues to come into oil and if the markets continue to stay bullish. Just yeah. like you saw a lot of the flow move towards the oil names uh, uh, today. So again, the private Twitter feed as well as the steam room, uh, today most of the names were all oil. Everything was oil. Everything was oil. I mean, you know, huge names like CVX, XOM, um, you the know, Cop. Chevron and the Exxon Mobil. Yeah, the, the COP, 
uh, you know, these things just lit up the screens. Halliburton two, Halliburton two for the last couple of days. Uh, you know, that thing, that thing was amazing, and we saw steam in uh, you know all of these names uh, for the last couple of days, and also uh, uh, today as well. So depending on what your strategy is, and again, today we're talking about the intraday trading, um, and specifically the the first commandment here is that you you, you really want to stick with that initial alert. Um, and once I take back the screen, I'll go ahead and give you an examples on uh, why you want to, especially if you're going to trail uh, with the option. So we're just talking about the equity move right now. Now, if you want to actually trade the option, you know, there's a lot of other things you you, you got to think about as well. So uh, again, course. stick with that initial action, and then intraday, as Jesus was saying, you got to take your profits. You got to take your profits if you're going to trade intraday. If you're holding overnight, then that's a different story. You know, but intraday, and again, that's that's another one of the commandments as well. Uh, you know, without getting too far ahead of ourselves, but uh, any intraday action that you're trading off of steam from you know a big options buyer, it's not like you could just buy the shit and just hang on to it. You know what I mean? Like that's not how it works either. And again, you'll learn this as well uh, through the course and through your own experience too. You got to That's that's the number one thing, and and I preach that to all the steam room members as well. If, if you're a day trader, you can understand you're day trading, okay? And day trading means you take what the market's giving on that particular day, all right? So not everything you touch on every single day is going to be some huge winner. Yes, you'll catch some runners by accident, but my point being, when, when you come into this market and you look at the day trade off the wise guy action, you have to lock in profits when they're there. Okay, it's when you tend to get greedy and expect everything to, you know, just go parabolic on you. It's that's when you run into trouble and winners turn into losers. Okay, me, I'm in the habit forming of taking profits quickly, so it keeps me out of getting in trouble like that. All right, but you gotta understand when you're day trading, you're day trading. Swing trading is a whole different ball game. All right, and I, I want to give another example of. You know, action that was a little more of a grind, where um, it wasn't some huge winner, but I was more than happy with the results, okay? And honestly, may have been the most aggressive action as far as order flow throughout the whole day. And that's this Yandex. It's some Russian internet pro uh, provider company, whatever you want to call it. I couldn't care less. But the bottom line is, at 10.30 in the morning, some guy comes in, and sweeps multiple exchanges for July 22 calls, $161,000 bet there. Okay, that's at 1035. That bet alone, I fired off of. And as you can see, another $50,000 sweep came in after that. Uh, we scroll up a little bit more, a couple minutes later, $50,000 sweep, $100,000 sweep, $50,000. You get the picture, okay? So, now let's go to the Yandex chart and you can see exactly, oh, we're here already, my bad. So here's where that Yandex uh, sweep action came in, okay? I get in on the equity, I fire, I have my, again, whether it's a mental stop loss or a physical stop loss I'm putting in, I determine where I think this is going in the wrong direction, so I'm willing to minimize my downside. And you can see off that aggressive action, had a nice pop, a little consolidation, went highs again, and sort of chopped around for the remainder of the day. Okay, it didn't fall out of bed, just lost a lot of momentum. The market lost momentum. Could be a lot of reasons and excuses. But the bottom line is, I locked this profit in regardless. Okay, so from 21.65 to 21.90, I'm out. And you know, again, you could have made that determination and locked it in at any point throughout the day. But the reason why I want to show this uh, as opposed to some of those oil, those energy names, where they just, again, went parabolic throughout the day, this was more normal, okay? This was something you had to get in, catch that first sweeper, as Luchi was mentioning, that initial alert, okay, and then sell while maybe retail and everybody else was piling on. All right, you wouldn't have got hurt if you held on too long, but you would have lost some profits there, and you got to keep your downside um, always, you know, protect it. I mean, that's the obvious. Let me show one more uh, just as an example because I don't want to show only winners. I'm going to hear it from every troll out there. Here's Facebook, all right? Small sweep, weekly sweeper, all right? I didn't trade it, but let's say you're eyeing Facebook for a possible day trade today. Uh, they come in at 1030 
very small bet, sweep multiple exchanges, $87,000 bet. They are weeklies, so maybe that caught your attention, uh, 119 calls. Okay, so they're looking for a bounce. In simple English, a small sweeper is looking for a bounce. So you get in again off that initial alert there. That was the only Facebook alert. 117.88 is that reference price. Okay, so that's right around here. And you can see coming off a nice little sell-off here, so lined up nicely. So, but here's the issue, and it, and you may see this a lot of times, especially on small sweeps. Had that a little initial push, and then faded. Okay, and then you can see bottomed out around here. Had a little further push later on in the day. Ultimately, that faded. So now, if you were looking to catch that home run off that little mini Facebook sweep, okay, it never came. All right, now, this thing hung around uh, long enough to where you could have stopped yourself out, still in the green, for that matter, okay? I don't know, maybe actually it came down lower later in the day. But my point being is, if you couldn't take these profits, okay, for some reason, and you end up holding this trade and never protected your downside, hypothetically, this thing really sold off harder later in the day, that's where people get into trouble. Okay, they they refuse to be they refuse to take those scratch trades, Lucci, that and admit they're wrong. Uh, just because there was a small sweep on Facebook doesn't mean this thing's gonna run a, a stick or two. Okay, this one happened to run where'd they get in here, the reference price, just a one seventeen eighty eight, hit a high here of one eight and a quarter, and then 118.50 after that. So if that's not enough for you to lock in, you just got to make sure you protect your downside and not let these little winners turn into big losers. Other than that, the, the edge of wise guy action in day trading, guys, is bar none. And the reason, I, the reason I say that's very simple. There is no other intraday real-time indicator, not one. If you know one, please share it with me that you will see this type of instant reaction, okay, off a signal uh, on seven and a half to eight out of 10 alerts. There's not, there's not another indicator out there. And I'm in this game 20 plus years. Like I said, I have not seen it. But out of, I would say again, not, these are rough numbers off the top of my head through my experience of trading off this action. On the day trading end, seven and a half to eight out of 10 legitimate sweepers, you're going to see some sort of reaction. It's all a matter of how big, how long that momentum lasts, and that's where you as a trader got to come in and look to take advantage of that. Nice, nice, nice. Um, let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and take back the screen here. I'll go, I'll go ahead and show you guys a little example here. Uh, just a little bonus example here for uh, you know any of you options players out there. Uh, again, you know most of the rules they're pretty much the same. Uh, you know, past couple of days here we've had a lot of flow in MGM uh, inside the steam room. You'll have a little search function here, so you can go back a little bit as far as uh, you know looking at action in the past couple of days. Uh, we're always working on technology, new technology here in the steam room as well uh, to provide more information for you guys when you want it. Um, I think they started with this MGM. GM and around like the 23, 23 June call as well as the 23 and a half uh, June call. So if you guys are, you know, you see MGM obviously just kind of flattening <coughs> out, you'll see like resistance, you know, you guys might do your support and resistance technicals, whatever you want to look at it. Me, like I'll start to get really confident once I see some real players come into the options. Uh, and if you take a look at the June 95, uh, June 25 today, like MGM usually doesn't trade, uh, you know, this kind of size here. She only does obviously when there's this big action, a lot of moves that are that are taking place. Uh, you can see a huge, huge uh, a block, uh, you know, of, of uh, contracts traded on the 25. But you'll see this 23 call. They started buying this at 40 cents. Okay, so this option was at 40 cents when they started buying this. All right, look at where it is now. You're talking about a two dollar move. And granted, there's no way to know. Um, there's no way to know, uh, you know, some of these larger players if they're holding through the whole damn move. Like, we don't want to know. We don't want to be involved too much. Uh, you know, we're trying to figure that out. But check out this block guy right here. So this was something that was flagged inside the steam room here, 38 cents. And this was on, uh, you know, May 23rd. We also flagged a lot of the action uh, that happened after. So this was the initial, uh, you know, bet that came in on the MGM. 
So this is like your calling right here. This is like, okay, you know, MGM, these casinos are all looking somewhat bullish here. If you take a look at the win, too, as well, this was another name that we were watching. Couldn't really break down, uh, you know, 80s or whatever, and then finally just kind of came back into the 90s. And you kind of knew, you know, all right, you know, if this market really gets going here, you could get 100 tests. Uh, similar, to, uh, similar with the MGM. The MGM was actually more bullish. So this was the initial action that came in. And again, you're getting the cheapest price on your options. I can't stress this enough. After the stuff has already moved here, you know, then you're kind of at, you're, you're, you're kind of at risk, okay? Because number one, you know, what are you going to do here? You, number one, you're going to start chasing it, so you're not going to play it in the money option. So you're going to start to go at 24. You're going to start to go at 25. And then once you start chasing, remember, like now you're pushing on the emotions. You know what I mean? Now you're pushing on the emotions. So chances are you're going to pay up for these options, and you're going to have to experience a little drawdown here before you come back to even Steven and continue going. And that's provided your, your name has enough steam, and they're really rotating into these names to buy them, sell them, or whatever. Okay, so they're provided there actually is follow through on some of the options activity that you're seeing, you know, now you've got to become a better trader as far as where you're going to get your entries and where you're going to take your exits. What options are you going to go for? Uh, so again, I've got to stress, uh, you know, the, the initial point is stick with that initial bet. Stick with that initial bet. Stick with, stick with that reference price that they started buying it at. So if you look on 23rd where they started buying it at, it was around like 21.75, a little bit under 22 bucks. So stick with that kind of reference price. Anytime you get a little a little juice down here, 22 bucks or anything under 22 bucks, like that's where you want to start picking up the option. But basically, you want to stick with that initial order because you get the cheapest price on your options. After the move is done, then guess what? That's where you get the chasers. That's why these options start moving aggressively. They grow through your strike price, go through your strike price, and that's when they start paying out. In reality, you already want to be in these things. You want to be the one selling to everybody that's chasing to get into this. Okay? Because once this party's over, guess where all these options go? If you're, you know, if you're still out of the money or whatever the case is, you know, you're going to lose a lot of that premium. And if you get stuck on the top side of these things, trying to chase after, you know, you, you already get in bulk of the moves, uh, you know, this is where you start to get into a little trouble. So I can't stress that enough. We see it all the time, Jesus and I in the chat room, you know, we'll see stuff get flagged and stuff already moving. And then we'll see people ask us, should we still buy? Should we still buy? Should we still buy? You know, and, and it gets a little frustrating, but we understand this is the nature of trading. Uh, and this is something that, again, we, we, we try to teach aggressively uh, in the course as well as inside the room, um, you know, and with the community in general. Yeah, everybody, Lucy, it's just common, you know, especially when I was, when I first got into the game, you, you're taught that, you know, buy the breakouts. Everyone wants to buy something when it's already moving, right? That's just the human nature, human emotion for trading. Um, but a lot of times that will get you into trouble, especially, guys, especially when you're trading options, okay? Because, like Lucy pointed out, I mean, your, your cost and your premium is so critical and important for you to make money. You know, you don't want to come in and chase these things when they're overheated and they're robbing you as far as the premium and on these calls. And a lot of times today is a perfect example. I'm glad you brought up that MGM because it may look like a lot of call buying, but in reality, it's just the sharp players rolling strikes, Lucci. That's all they're doing. They're closing out with their profits and they're letting some roll, pushing them out a little bit further. And yeah, that's what I they wasn't, I wasn't even going to bring up. I wasn't going to bring up the the idea of rolling. And again, like we talk about rolling aggressively in the uh, in the course as well. Uh, you know, but again, if you were a smarter player and you want to book some profits, but you still want to be in the trade, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? We watch the the activity, the footprints of the larger players out there, because again, they make smarter decisions. You guys know it, uh, and we know it, and we see it all the time. Guess what? That those examples that Jesus was showing, they came in and bought the. Dip. They're not buying the highs, you know, aggressively. They're buying when these options are cheap. They're buying the pullbacks. They're rolling contracts so they can book profits so they don't have to deal with time decay and, uh, you know, all kinds of other stuff. We are trying to follow these larger players. Exactly. Exactly. 
All right. So, uh, with no more ado here, let's go ahead and take some uh, take some questions here. Again, uh, we got a new course coming out, uh, hundred bucks off too for you guys signing up this week. Uh, it'll last for the week, and then I uh, I believe the price is going to go back up to uh, to four ninety nine. Um, and the value you're getting here is uh, is pretty absurd. So you're going to get all the courses. You're going to get a, a, a good video library here uh, with all this info, um, and then. Where uh, Jesus and I believe the, the biggest value is, is you're going to get live uh, live recordings from myself and Jesus going through examples just like we did today. Uh, and then, you know, with the market, you know, things are, it's it's difficult here uh, to, to just get things black and white. You know, you see this and go do X, Y, and Z. And this is where we really break into all of the other things, um, you know, that that uh, that that go into making decisions uh, in the market. Whether you want to swing, what kind of strategy, how am I going to use the information that I'm seeing uh, to better my strategy, find better entries and exits. This is stuff that we all talk about in uh, examples, and this is all stuff that Jesus and I both trade. Uh, you know, we both traded the MGM. We both traded, uh, you know, aggressively some of the names that he talked about today, the oil names, as well as the room. So we all trading together out here. Uh, another thing you get is a uh, consultation here. So any of you guys having tax issues or you're trying to uh, cut down your costs as far as uh, your, through your brokerage uh, commissions, we can help you with that. Uh, and then some of the more advanced guys, if you want to automate parts of your strategy but you don't know how to go about it, we can help you. We got a nice back end team that's working on a lot of automation. Uh, and we can provide uh, some of that knowledge back to you. Uh, we are also throwing in a psychology sort of crash course uh, that I used to uh, uh, throw into one of my other uh, courses. So we're going to throw that in for you as well. And if that's not enough, we got a whole month here uh, free in the Steam Room, so you can check it out. We got a great mobile platform; works well on the mobile. Uh, and and you'll get access to private Twitter as well. Uh, we're also doing Q and A sessions in the webinars or with webinars for uh, uh, you know every single week as well. So you're going to get access to those too. Uh, and just being in there every single day, that's where a lot of the value is too. So again, use this link. You guys are going to uh, see it in your questions tab. Uh, use that link to get a hundred bucks off. And let's go ahead and uh, and take some questions here. So we got uh, well, let's see, let's see. We got James here. Uh, how much does the order flow access cost after the first month? Um, so uh, it depends on what you want. You know, it depends on if you want just the private Twitter feed uh, or you want the Steam Room. We have a lot of guys, uh, you know, that just follow uh, Jesus, uh, you know, options order activity. Uh, and they don't want anything else. And I think Joe is saying the same thing. Can we example? Can we see an example of a raw Twitter feed? Uh, sure, I'll go ahead and pull that up for you right now. Uh, and some people just want that access because they have enough knowledge for trading the markets, and you know they don't want to be sitting in a room full of uh, you know a, a bunch of other traders because they kind of know what they want to do. Uh, and they go ahead and just uh, uh, subscribe to the private Twitter feed. So you'll see just activity on your private Twitter hits. Um, and the difference with, with the steam room is, is that you'll see this activity come in in the steam room and then you'll see a lot more color uh, around the activity. So Jesus, can you give an example of yeah. what would be the difference? It's pretty, it's pretty simple. I mean, the private Twitter I would recommend if, if you already have an idea of how to utilize the, the wise guy activity and incorporate it into a style, okay, then the private Twitter is probably for you. If you're yeah. learning how to, if if you if you have an idea and you think, all right, there, I know there's something with this wise guy action. I see it. I just can't put it together to to have it pay off on my trading. Then you got to come in at least for the com a couple of months to the chat room. Our yeah. reason being is I do a webinar every morning. Lucci and I do a webinar at the close twice a week. Okay, and we discuss at length. Um, you know, over and over and show examples of how to utilize this information best for you. Everybody's different. Lucci trades a different way than, than I do, and we both use this information, okay, in critical ways. But Lucci trades on the option end, and he focuses more on using uh, the flow as confirmation to what he's looking at, and I'm day trading equity. Okay, so there are several ways, including just sentiment in using this information, it's just you guys got to figure out, you know, what type of traders you want incorporated into that. So that's what the steam room is for. 
Cool. Uh, we got another question here uh, from Tom, or actually Sue here. Do you get, uh, wait, 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 not from Sue. Uh, who do we got? Who do we got? How does it differ from uh, the stock Twitch free feed? So uh, Jesus free feed is not real time. Uh, so Jesus, wanna, you want to you wanna add in on that one? How does it differ from your, your free uh, uh, Twitter? Uh, and it's night and day. It's, uh, you know, the private Twitter is every single aggressive alert that hits the market in real time as uh, quick as you're going to get out there. I mean, that's why, you know, uh, they're automated. Uh, that's why they're done a certain way. You know, you're not going to find any aggressive action any quicker than the way we have it right now. Uh, and at the same time, uh, again, you know, the, the Twitter, the regular Twitter feed, you're, you're not getting three quarters of the action or even one hundredth of the commentary. So uh, yeah. it's apples and yeah. oranges. Yeah, and James, come on, give us some credit, man. If it was the same here, then we would be assholes, man. We would be complete assholes. We don't want to be that. Uh, and again, so what you're getting for the prime, we, we don't, we don't want to give away stuff that you should be paying for uh, uh, for free. So everything that is on our Twitter feeds, uh, you know, just might pertain to our thoughts on the market or, you know, things that have already happened. Uh, you know, Steam that worked out well, Steam that didn't work out well, you know, you'll see stuff after the fact. Um, on the uh, the regular uh, Twitter feeds. Uh, so James is saying, how much is the chat steam room per month? It's about it's uh, 225. It's about 225 per month. Uh, that's if you want to be in the uh, the steam room. Uh, and again, you're getting a lot more value here. You're 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 able to sit in a room with a lot of uh, experienced traders. You get in the mobile app here. Uh, you're also getting access to the private Twitter and for the webinars. You're getting a webinar every single morning. How to set things up for the day. Any questions you might have. Uh, where rotate Rotation could happen. That's a that's a topic that we always talk about, and we usually nail it pretty well. Um, and you're getting uh, you know Q and A webinars where the whole community gets together after the close. Uh, you know where we talk about uh, you know things that uh, things that do happen. So James, now is Lucci, you, Lucci yep. part of the course um, is it's included, right? A month fee, and is, yeah. is there a yep. discount renewal rate, or I don't know if that's around. That you, I, I don't. Th uh, so renewing at so you're going to get renewed at 199 after that. So if you take advantage oh, of okay. this discount that we do have, you're going to continue to get the uh, the 199 discount rate from the 225. So you, you with know, the course, you're in, saying right. right with the course with the course. Um, let's see. Joe is saying, is there a redundancy uh, should unforeseen happen uh, with Twitter feed? Uh, AKA J gets sick or hit by the bus. Um, that's a great question. That is a great question. So what happens when Jesus is unavailable? Remember, like we, uh, as I said before, as we are working a lot on technology, our private Twitter feed as well as the Steam Room here, how the alerts are pushed into this particular platform, it's, everything is automated. Everything is automated. You know what I mean? So we can. It's it's very easy uh, for us if Jesus is not available uh, to continue to push out these alerts, uh, and you will get access to those on private Twitter feed or inside the Steam Room. So again, we are working towards even more automation uh, so that uh, you know we can work around issues like that. Um, and we're also trying to build uh, more automation for you guys, for all our members, so that you guys can easily point and click and get to the information you need. Uh, uh, very quickly. So it's always an evolving sort of uh, ecosystem inside St. Lucie and Wall Street Jesus uh, where we continue to better our platform so that you guys have uh, you know the information that you need here. We have uh, Kumar here saying on an alert how would you protect subscribers chasing each other? Okay, <laughs> and this is an interest. This is a very interesting question and I'm assuming it's coming from a place where um, you know, this is coming from the manipulation theory uh, and the sort of, uh, 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 what, what is the word, the scamming kind of theory uh, behind a lot of the UOA activity and some of the other feeds out there. Um, but Jesus, you want to you you yeah, you comment yeah, on this? Sure. I'll take this one after. I, that's, that's a, you know, it's a, it makes a lot of sense, that question. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of small cap rooms out there where... Uh, you know, you got the one guy giving out his stock picks. You're driving his stock higher. Uh, yep. Again, you're dealing with a two million share float on a two dollar stock, where we're trading Facebook and a lot of names here. And uh, come on, that's one of the reasons I don't like to give my stock picks. I don't come out and say buy this, sell that. Okay, I want everybody to learn their own way and to do their own thing. I never say everybody go out and buy. I'm buying X, Y, Z. Yeah. Okay, and, and I've been asked to do that, and I refuse to do that 
for that reason. And uh, at the same time, not only are we, we're not trading UOA, okay? Facebook, Potash, Mosaic, they may end up being some unusual volume there, but we're trading aggressive sweepers, smaller sweepers, and liquid names. So it's, it's totally different. And at the same time, you've got people trading different styles. I'm day trading the equity, Lucci's looking at calls. And, and it may not, it could be at a different line. He could right. be buying weeklies instead of Junes, you know? So there's no piling on into one thing here, as far as I can right. see. And, and, you know, to add on to uh, Kumar's, uh, um, you know, question right there, is that crowd sentiment and, and the way the markets work lend itself to the following, okay? So anytime you see, everybody's looking at volume. Everybody's looking where all the action is. The question is, is who can get there first and who can get there better than the others, all right? There's many, many people that have different ways of doing it. How do you think stocks are able to break out through, you know, support and resistance here, okay? There has to be enough of a catalyst to get through this stuff. And then you get the follow through of uh, folks that are trying to trade ahead of it, and then you get that sort of cascade effect, whether it's on the upside or whether it's on the downside. Okay, that's how things happen intraday. All right, so even when you see, uh, you know, I think uh, what was it that MPC that you threw out there for that yeah. that uh, that big better? So that yeah. when you see a guy come in and buy 1.2 million dollars worth of freaking call options, and you're the market maker, and you just sold them those options. Uh, by the way, Jesus, which which one were they? They were the July 30. Which one? Uh, that's a good question. Hold on. I got yeah. it right here. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I can find it here. 35s, it looks like. Yeah, you'll probably see it stick out like a... Oh, here it is. Uh, they were the July 35s, correct? Yeah, there you go. So when you see this block order come in, and the market maker goes ahead and sells this, and by the way, we talked about this a little bit on the first series, and we'll talk about it a lot more in the course, as well as in the steam room. This is what we talk about all the time. If you guys are newbies as far as uh, you know, understanding options, market makers, and things like that, when a market maker has to uh, sell this guy, you know, this amount of contracts, what do you think this guy's got to do? Remember, he's a market maker. They're not sitting out there trying to, uh, you know, trying to figure out where stocks are going to go. This is a market maker. So they're going to come, what are they going to do? If they sell 4,000 call options, they're going to come in and buy stock. They are going to come in and buy stock, all right? The question is, are they going to buy enough to move this thing? And just like that, it is a cascade effect. Now you've got retail players that are buying into it. The market maker is sitting there buying a crap load of stock. And what do you think happens? Okay, this is how the market works. Whether you're looking, what it doesn't matter what you're looking at, intraday on a short-term basis, this is how the market works. If you don't get that, um, you know, if there's a lot of work that you've got to do uh, as far as trading and understanding uh, uh, the markets. And, this and let me just throw out there, Lucci, just on that point, let me just throw out there, it's not always either the size, okay? We will see right. that reaction off, um, a, you know, a 2,000 lot sweep in Facebook, which is peanuts. It may be a, a $300,000 bet, but it's more about who placed that order, okay? Um, the average Joe out there is not sweeping multiple exchanges to get a fill, okay? Let's be honest. So, you know, I get a lot of times, well, for every buyer, there's a seller. You know, that's, that's the Twitter rebuttal for everything I do here. Yep, Where, in yep. fact, it couldn't be more wrong because, yeah, you're right, they have to make a market. But that's like saying when some wise guy comes in and bets 10 grand on the Giants, the right. bookie's going to take that bet. But you think he's not trying to get rid of that bet Susie Susie hits his books? So, you know, we see that a lot. And it's not just on million-dollar bets, guys. I've seen reaction like this on a hundred thousand dollar sweeps that the average Joe don't even know hit the hit the tape out there. So right. it's more about the professionals that are placing these aggressive orders than the size of the bet that's taking place. Right, and you know what? To cap this off here, we got another question from Jay. Uh, it looks like Breitinger, Breitinger. Uh How do you know it isn't covered calls? just for the premium and again this is something that we talked about aggressively on the first webinar and that you will get inside the course the way that we flag this options activity okay the way that we flag this options activity 
uh, is we look at the structure of it. We look at how the order was processed. Okay, the details. That's how we are trying. That's how we are trying to figure out if there's going to be edge in that particular trade. If there's going to be some kind of follow through, whether it's intraday or for swing trading or whatever it is. Now, if you sit there and try to figure out what exactly the player wanted to do for every single trade or transaction. Okay, you're going to go absolutely nuts. There are 16 million contracts traded on a daily basis, okay, in the markets. You want to sit there and try to figure out, oh, what is this guy doing? Is he hedging? Is, he, is this a covered call? Is this, uh, is this guy just collecting premium? Blah, blah, blah. It's going to get you nowhere, okay? And the way we flag this activity, and again, we talk about it a lot inside the course, uh, which is a lot different than what uh, some of the other providers out there um, is we're looking at how the order was actually transacted, how the transaction hit the tape, uh, and how it was executed here. Jesus, you want to uh, you you, you want to throw some icing on the top here? Yeah, and it's so funny because you know I I'll get that, and I got that on that on that MPC. Maybe that's why he's asking that. People telling me it's a call seller, and you know I mean common sense. Look at the reaction in the stock. You think the stock ran like that off a call seller? So that's it goes to show you. Again, I say it all the time, we're paying over $2,000 a month for a specific software to help us on the details of the order flow. It's not about just looking at where a trade was um, printed, bid or asked. It's not that easy, guys. It's the detail of the flow around that bet and the actual bet itself that helps us determine and get the best idea of whether that was a buy or sell. And again, the reaction off that off that order speaks in volumes in itself, right? I mean, even if I'm wrong and that MPC was a call seller, look at the reaction in the stock. Okay, so that that's that's what I'm telling you. Don't everybody tries to act a little more intelligent than they than they really are, and when you try to keep it as simple as possible, all right? All this order flow that's going into the steam room, that's why you're paying for it. The, the work has been done for you, all right? Now it's for you guys to come up with a strategic plan to capitalize off that, okay? Right. Don't focus on the complicated stuff. We're doing that for you. Focus on the stuff that you can handle, and that's the trading aspect. Right, right, and the execution aspect. And by the way, uh, you know, as you sit in the steam room, and again, as I said, we are working more and more on technology. Uh, we are working on more and more ways to help automate, uh, you know, some of your execution. And this is where most traders fail uh, is in the execution. You can have all the ideas in the world, but you have no idea how to trade them. And uh, you know, often folks see the money in the market every single day. Uh, but it's very difficult for them to see that in their account. So uh, again, talking ahead of myself, get in the steam room here, get inside the community here, see what's going on. Uh, you can do it pretty, uh, you can do it pretty quickly and pretty wisely too. Uh, just taking advantage of the discounts that we do have here. There's a lot of value in the course. Uh, again, you get in the uh, the live classes with myself and Jesus to talk examples, both swing trading intraday as well as sentiment reads too. How you can use the flow to uh, you know to give you a solid read on sentiment of the markets, uh, and you get a solid consultation here if you guys want to automate strategies. You need taxes. You need help with your taxes. You need help with uh, uh, ironing out lower commission rates. Uh, you know we can help you out there. Uh, and then a lot of talk on psychology, which is everything behind your execution. Uh, Jay here has another question here. Did you see action on Tesla calls uh, before this huge move? Uh, you know, Jay, uh, it's it's not it's not a it's not a a crystal ball here. You know what I mean? We're not going to sit here and purport to say it's a crystal ball. So every move out there, did we see the action line up so that this this happened? Like if you uh, if you were actually in the steam room today, uh, you would see that off the open and you know prior to the market opening, uh, all the talk uh, you'll see me right here. Uh, so 9:15, watching Tesla off the open, and this is simply because I've been trading for a while. You know, did I see flow line up for uh, you know the, that that activity? Uh, not particularly. No. Now, what did I look at as far as my own thing? Like everybody has their own strategy. Everybody's going to do what they do. Uh, you know, Tesla had a really big move. Uh, you know, did we see some of the call action come into the Tesla? Not really. Not really. I just looked at it as you know, this thing just kind of needs a move. There was a nice reversal yesterday, uh, so there could be some juice to the upside, and there was a solid, solid move on the calls. Uh, you know, for a lot of the subscribers here. So despite the fact 
we might not we, we you know we might not see that action come into a name like this for a move like this it doesn't mean we're not looking for it doesn't mean we're not looking for it depends on you know what kind of strategy you go for i trade the large cap so this is my this is my wheelhouse so i don't care if you know if jesus comes and hits me with some options activity or not i'm going to trade this regardless simply because like i like this setup and this is what i do um, you know and you'll get that in the room as well the only thing Lucci, honestly okay that may have just um, affected that Tesla trade was if a short put sweeper came in when you were in, you might have considered locking a profit quicker. That's about yep. the only thing, right? So yep. Yep. not everything, like Luchi's been in this game and successfully trading for a long time, okay? So not every, not all the action in each individual name has to line up for him to make money. I mean, but it helps big picture wise in everything he does, okay? The flow was bullish, the flow has been bullish, okay? Uh, avoid going short, avoid looking long. That all plays into the big picture scheme of things when it comes to him trading. It's right. not about the action in individual names. Yes, for me, day trading, okay, I'm more reliant on it. But there are a lot of people, a lot of different type of traders in this room that don't trade every single name that hits the board, guys. It, it, it's not used for that. You can use it for so many reasons. Today we're talking about day trading. I shared how I use this stuff. But there's so many ways to use this, the, the information. It's, it's, it's not even funny. We need a four-hour webinar to explain it all. We actually do it in the course. Yep, yep. We do it all in the course, guys. So go ahead and take advantage of, uh, of the discount. Remember, you're getting a free <laughs> month of the Steam Room as well. Uh, you know, so you're getting a lot of value here, a lot of bang for your buck. So if now there was a time where you guys were on the fences on uh, on signing up or not, uh, you know, this is the uh, this is the place where you want to pull the trigger. So uh, again, you're getting all this value. You guys have the link. Uh, in case you have any questions whatsoever, uh, go ahead and email us contact at sanglucci.com. Uh, our admin Seth at sanglucci.com will take care of most of it. Um, and uh, and go ahead and ask us anything. Um, James is saying one more question. Does index flow come up often, and is it useful? I love the index flow that comes up. I always, always go with the index flow. Um, you know, again, index flow comes when you get big reversals in the market, and that's where they're, they're, they, they pay out everybody. So, uh, again, we, you know, we always go back uh, to one of the biggest reversals, I would say, in the history uh, of the last three years or four years, because this market is absolutely insane. Um, you know, but there was a huge spy reversal here, and we were able to detect it and watch it simply from the spy and index bets, IWM, Qs, and spy. So anytime into the lows, too. Yep. Into the right lows. Into the lows. Yep. Right into the lows. We'll often watch uh, VIX as well. Any of the VIX products, too, uh, we'll watch that as well. And right now, the flow is all pretty bullish out there, and there's a lot of puts that uh, you know are looking for further melt down here on the UVXY as well as the VXX. So that helps with sentiment too and that helps with lining up you know trades that you want to take during the day and without giving away too much of this stuff this is all stuff we talk about in the course too. Yeah and I just wanted to add on that question that's a good question because the e ETF flow is one of the most useful things off the wise guy action. Uh, James to your question over the last I would say two weeks the flow has been telling us that sweepers have been focusing primarily on IWM, okay? That, that's been their bread and butter. Anytime we see a bullish ETF sweeper, they've been coming into the small caps, and there's been small cap outperformance. There's been a lot of small cap action out there as far as flowing individual names. So the ETF action helps drastically in regards to sentiment. Indeed, indeed. All right, guys, you have the link. Go ahead and pull the trigger, and we will see you guys in the Steam Room uh, uh, tomorrow, hopefully, uh, you know, or whenever you guys want to uh, to get on board here. So take advantage, uh, and we will see you soon, man. Jesus, thank you very much, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll check you guys later. Good luck in the markets. Yep. Thanks for coming out, guys. <laughs>